So I have three tiny frogs, three mouths to feed, and I had a problem to solve. Now these three frogs live in this epic terrarium that I created. It's bioactive, it's full of life, and it's epic. Now, the mister was the problem. But firstly, let's talk about the frogs. It all started 20 years ago, when I first became obsessed with these animals. This is a terrarium for three small brown tree frogs, or the whistling tree frog. The whistling tree frog was introduced from Australia many, many, many years ago to New Zealand. It's been naturalized in New Zealand, meaning that it thrives and flourishes all over the whole country. Now I give all my animals visual health checks once a month, roughly, especially in winter. Now with frogs being amphibians, you don't really want to handle them too often. They're not pets that you handle, but I was being safe and I was putting a glove. So if you do need to handle them or you do need to move them around or catch them, make sure you put plastic gloves on because their skin is very sensitive. Now you might be surprised, they actually call these guys potato, potato and pistato. And that's because while well, they look like little potatoes, they look like little spuds, like little roast potatoes just come out of the oven. Look at these cute little guys, honestly. Now being frogs, they love to jump. Look at this, I got a little two for one special, a little two for one coupon. They love to jump, like I said, they see anything in the distance, they'll jump. The two brown whistling tree frogs in my hands look like they're different species. They just come from different environments in the terrarium. One was in the light area, one was in the dark area, and that's how good their camouflage is. And yes, they can swim. This is me placing all three back in. Once I did all the chores, and the chores I will get to in regards to what I have to do for their visual health check and make sure that their environment is clean and all the other maintenance I need to do. Now these tree frogs are nocturnal, meaning that they are mostly active at night. And this is a little spill about them. So we have a great website in New Zealand that shows you a lot about the southern brown tree frog. And look at its spread. Look at that. All that red and all that brown. I can't even see where it isn't or doesn't exist. So what was the issue that needed the tissue? Well, obviously I had to do all this pumping myself and not the kind of pumping you're thinking about get your mind out of the gutter. All this laborious misting. Now, with a actual handheld mister, you have to do it yourself physically, right? And I had to be present with all my terrariums and paludariums. That was the problem. I thought, all right, it's 2024. How can I automate this? How can I be hands-free? So I did some soul searching. I started to think about things while I was doing the maintenance of this terrarium. Now I always liked the idea of a mister, but here in New Zealand, the bottom of the world, our supply chains are super expensive. We don't have much selection down here. I thought, okay, well, in the past, the mister was an option. Let's revisit the misting process again. And while I was thinking, I was going through the very therapeutic process of doing all the maintenance and cleaning out the terrarium. So once I have the frogs out, basically I'll look for any additional leaf litter, anything decaying matter, any dead bugs, or just basically do some trimming and make sure the plants are all okay. And like most reptile and amphibian keepers, we are never truly satisfied with our enclosure setup. So I thought, okay, let's get some more stimulus in there. I went through my bark cover piles and I thought, okay, let's get this one. It looks cool. Something for them to hide on, to climb on, and on those frosty days to hide under. So I went to Google and I started looking for a mister. And it made sense that Timu came up. This is the one that I chose and it got here in like a week. But I had to double check what else was out there, I had to look at competitors, and what I saw was astonishing. Timu was like a fraction of the price. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of that countdown, but this is it. It has arrived, and the first thing I was super, super impressed with is that it was a USB input, which makes it super, super simple to use. So when it arrived, the first thing you want to do is plug it in, make sure it's working. Now, it's really, really simple to use. On and off button, it starts making some noise, but it's really simple. You've got the seconds on the left, and the hours on the right. So. 15 seconds every four hours every five hours and you can do it like that now it's got a little instruction manual that will give you the spiel but it was pretty self-explanatory now the input that goes into the water actually has some like little liquor balls in there i'm guessing there's some bioactive balls the inputs are super simple what i loved about it i'm gonna just keep emphasizing the point it's super simple so i had to test it i put that sucker in some water put the inputs in now let's see what how we get on 
It also came with this like gnarly little pipe cutter. It was super sharp. So I was thinking, okay, well, I mean, it had to be safe around this thing, knowing that my luck, I'd probably cut my finger off. And then finally, once you've done all the connections, there's some stoppages. Maybe you want two misses, maybe you want three, maybe you want to set up different angles. Basically, get it all together, measure your terrarium, put them up, secure it, and have fun with it. So it's been two days since I've had this mister and it's working like a treat. It's doing 15 seconds every six hours to start. I want six hour cycles because whistling tree frogs, they live close to bodies of water, they need a lot of humidity and they like to be in damp and wet environments, being frogs. And all I have to do is fill that little sucker up. So I want to show you the other side of, I, I suppose, this hobby. Now that's Buster. He's my little fence cat, my little security perimeter checker. Now. In winter, there's not many flies around, so I usually go to the wild or to the garden and I look for free range bugs. Now these guys will eat these, so it's isopods, it's beetles, it's millipedes, anything small, and also a cleanup crew. And I do a combination, I grab everything and I'll split everything apart. I'll put the beetles in one tub, I'll put the isopods in another, I'll put the millipedes in another, anything else I catch. And what I'm doing is I'm basically feeding out their winter diet. Because there's no flies around and I don't want to pay for it, I catch some isopods and they love them. And to make sure the frogs actually eat these guys or get a chance to eat these guys before the isopods bury into the substrate, I put them into this tub and I just tip it to the side and I put it in one corner. And I'll often find the frogs sitting in that tub late at night or a few hours later and I can tell that they've got belly full of isopods. So what else can I tell you? Well, I bought a mister, and it was dope. It did the job, makes life easier for myself, as well as giving the frogs what they need. I'm Max. I love ectotherms, I've been obsessed with these animals since I was a kid, I've been obsessed with this hobby since I was a kid, and I hope you enjoy my content. And stay tuned for the next one. Who knows what's up next?